Hello, how's it going? Just another organ update. We're nearly actually done. This should be the second part from the last. The next one should be tuning it off and sorting it out a bit. But first, we need to finish this thing right here, which is the console. Over the last week, I've been wiring the top keyboard. So now we have both of the manuals, the upper and the lower. The upper manual feels a lot better. I think that's down to the fact that the lever is actually a lot shorter. The bottom one, it's all right. It's always felt like this, to be honest. I remember when we were at Joan's house and some of them that weren't sticking they were feeling pretty much the same as this. So there's what it is, it's pretty good, but um, the swell feels fabulous. There's a bit of plastic on the way that's gonna sit here. This is the music stand part, so you can see the back part of it, because of course this goes in a museum, so it's all gotta be somewhat visible. And this is gonna be sat in front of the pipes, ultimately, so that's another reason why we gotta have it a little bit see-through. You'll notice that bits of wood are missing from the console. That includes the top bit, the bits coming out to the side, this, that, and the other. Well, that's because I guess, the question was when we were grabbing all of the parts was when did the organ start and the building stop? That's the bit. So the owner of Joan's house wanted to keep the uh, kind of piece that was going down onto the console from the top because it was predominantly connected to the ceiling. Uh, so that nice pattern that was here, we don't have that. The same goes for the bits of wood that goes along here and along here to connect it to the rest of the building. Those we didn't leave with, but what are you gonna do? Some of you may think this looks a little bit rough around the edges and could do with a complete overhaul. And I am tempted to disagree with you. The thing is, is this isn't the best organ in the world. What is most important about this whole instrument is the story, the eccentrics behind it, and all of that stuff. So it's about trying to keep it as original as you can. And I'm maybe too far on the spectrum of this thought because I really like the idea that it is looking a little bit rough. Some people in the comments are saying, oh, you've got to clean the ivories. But you know, it's I've rubbed all of the easy to remove stuff, but that's that's just that's just 50 years of loving playing and stuff. I, it, it would be an absolute shame to remove any more of the patina than is needed. Some of the veneer is missing due to water damage, but this is how it was found. For me, and I'm sure quite a lot of you, uh, would agree that it's quite important to keep the original essence of the machine. Uh, there's just, uh, there's nothing worse than, you know, getting, let's say, getting an old push bike, you know, like a rally grifter or something, and giving it a complete overhaul to make it look brand new, or making a computer look brand new and completely removing its whole story. I, I, it's not, it's not my thing, it's, uh, oh. In the end of the day, in the future, this could get sorted out, it could get cleaned up, it could have the story removed from it. It's never too late to do that, but in the meantime, it's only ever original to its story once. Even though this is, of course, a Frankenstein organ that was made from a load of other organs in the 1950s, it's still a very big aspect to the story. So because of that, it's gonna look rough around the edges, and if you don't like it, bite me. We've got a couple of jobs left to do. One of them is the wiring and circuitry for the console to make all of these switches do what they're supposed to do, which is switchy look switchiness. And also for a number of reasons that we will touch on when we get around to doing it, is moving the blower and all of the air systems into another room. <laughs> That's gonna be quite a job, but I really think that is gonna to add to the organ quite a lot. been a while since the room has looked like this, hasn't it? I'm really thankful that I put wheels on these Winchests just for easy movability and in the future it's going to make it easier to tune and stuff and if we need to move it it's going to be reasonably quick and easy. The only thing that is kind of chunky and difficult to move around without having to extensively somewhat take it apart is this bit right here. This is the, uh, the blower. We've got the blower, the fan blower under here. The reason I've moved the pipes away today is because I'm thinking it might be nice to move this stuff into another room. I've got rid of most of the leaks in this, but I think ultimately you're never gonna get rid, completely rid of it all. And it takes up a lot of space. For a museum display, it does look quite cool because people aren't aware that this is even a thing, this bit here. But ultimately, if we move this into a storeroom that is behind you right now, then it's gonna free up a load of space and make it so the pipes can go here and then the console can go in front of it, which will also make it safe for viewing so people can come into the room which they haven't been able to yet. So what we need to do is dismantle all of this and try and get it into the store cupboard behind us, chop a hole in the wall, have a pipe, which either A is gonna be a solid pipe 
or be a flexible pipe. I'm not sure yet. Let's see how we get on. Pulling it to pieces one more time. Pulling it to we might have a look at the blower as well. With any luck. So this set of bellows is basically acting like an air capacitor. You can think of it as the same as being like a filtering capacitor in an electronic circuit. What it's going to do is reduce the fluctuations in the airflow or the electricity flow. It's just going to smooth out the air pressure so it doesn't make the pitches fluctuate coming out of the pipes. So ideally this should be as close as possible to the pipes as possible. But uh, because it's only about two meters away over to the storeroom, I'm gonna put this in the storeroom as well because, because this and the blower are, well, they're very big contributing factors to the background hissing. So if we could get them out of the way, then there'll just be a lot less hissing and stuff. And then over time, have a go at trying to fix this, which I have been. But if you're here in the videos from the part two organ video up to the latest ones, you'll notice that the noise has gone down considerably. That's because I've been finding little air pockets, you know, with little bits of squirty water or touching it or there has been quite a dramatic reduction in noise. It's never going to be zero with this thing, but we'll have a better chance at putting it out of the area. I have a feeling this might be quite an experiment. I'm going to try and work with what I've got. So from what I understand, if you do it with solid piping, uh, it's best because it stops the piping moving as the pressure changes. So it doesn't go like that, which uh, sometimes can cause the organs to go. <laughs> but I'd like the idea of everything being removable and movable around. And if you make it cut to size and it's all solid, like solid guttering, you can only really use it once. And then you'd have to modify it again if we need to move the organ. So I'm going to stick with the same old gray piping that I've got from when we pulled it out of the house. Number one, because it's cheap. Number two, because it's always good to reuse stuff. First off, I'm gonna try and have a single pipe coming from this over to these pipes right here. It might not be able to shift enough air, but we don't know until we try it. So that's probably where we're gonna get to by the end of the video with a single pipe coming from the store cupboard over to here, seeing if we're gonna be able to shift enough air at all. Let's see. The other thing about moving the bellows is the pipes can go here, so the console can go here. So it's just a lot more compact and the sound surrounds you when you play on the keyboard. It'll be, be pretty cool. One of the downsides is we're gonna to have to remove the organ face. This wasn't Joan's original thing. I've just been using it as a ballast to keep the weight on this. But it's heavy. We're going to use this splitter box over here to distribute the air coming through the pipes. So we've got to remove it from the wind bellows or wind chest or whatever it's bloody called. Oh dear. One hand. Ow! Sharp thing! Sharp thing on shoulder! Time to get this in the cupboard. Let hope it fits. Yes. Oh, the joys of moving things. Oh, that's not that bad actually. I thought I was going to be heavier. Oh, Jesus. It's absolutely mad having it back to this point. I haven't stood in this place for like six months or so, I think it's been since uh, this has got all filled in. That's quite nice. We're going to put the pipes in here, but we're going to add a little bit of space so we could shuffle them around. So it means that we can still reach parts. I was thinking of building a platform to kind of have them a little bit taller and I might do in the future but right now I want to see if this idea works. The console is going to go here over this bit. At some point we may be removing this one, rewiring it and adding LEDs to this one as well because it's the only one that hasn't got LEDs but oh that'll be that'll be another project for another day because everything in front of it is now going to be on wheels. Even the console which I'm thinking of putting on a platform so it can wheel around as well so everything is mobile. Yeah it's pretty exciting. Some wheels. Oh, this is gonna be awesome on a platform. Pap turn! Hopefully, this will be able to shift enough air. The only way to find out is to give it a go. So, for this one, I'm gonna design a brand new mounting for it because the wooden kind of fittings that have been used since I guess forever have all started to go a bit skew with. This is the CAD program I use, it's called OnShape, it's actually an online one. Uh, the link is below if you want to check it out. Well, let's begin by making um, 110 millimeters. Here we go. How wide is the inside of the hose? 82 millimeters. So, the inside of the hose is 82 millimeters. Oh, 82. And then we're going to make the wall of that a little bit chunky. We're going to go with um, a centimetre thick wall. 
And now we're going to add some drill holes. We're going to go seven. We're going to go in the middle of this chunk. We're going to draw a hole for the screws. Uh, we're going to go uh, four millimeters. And then we're going to copy this around the axes a load of times. Let's go for six. You reckon six? Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Now we're just going to extrude all the parts. We're going to make the base thing, what, like uh, uh, five millimeters? This is going to be pretty chunky. And then we're going to raise the central bit. We're going to take that up by about... I don't know, we're going to make it reasonably long. Let's go with six. Six centimeters. Yeah. There we go. Let's go and print it. If anything in this video is going to make people go, oh no, don't do that, it's definitely going to be this. Screw it in and see where we're at. Oh no. I made this slightly too big. Might be on enough. All of the future ones are going to have to be a tiny bit smaller. But this one is alright to give it a go. So here we can see a potential issue that I mentioned at the start of the video. And that is the fact that this pipe, this diameter of pipe, which is about 90 centimetres, uh, is going to be able to shift enough air to the pipes. The best way of showing you this is by covering up the hole on the blower. Watch the blower fill up and now see how long it takes for it to drop down. It takes quite a while, doesn't it? So that's how quick the air is going to move through the pipe and it's obviously going to get slower and slower. It's very much the same analogy as current and voltage in electronics. We're talking about the current of the air, the current of the electricity traveling through through a wire that's going to be that thick in essence. However, I have done it like this because I am feeling jammy that this is going to be enough for most instances because this is a relatively small organ. But the only way to find out is to wire up that pipe and give it a go. So I'm going to drill a hole in the wall in the corner that we can fish the pipe through. I was thinking of putting a fitting on either side of the wall so the pipe would go to the fitting and come out. That might happen in the future, but for now, let's just get a hole in the wall. Let's just do it. Would you look at that? That's lovely. So you're just going to tighten the Jubilee clip onto it. In the end of the day, this organ was destined for the scrap heap, so anything to get it going is better than that. Right, I'm going to turn on the blower and see if it maintains pressure. Let's see if it will maintain any pressure. Right now, I've, I've, I've got the, uh, the blower wired into um, a remote uh, plug. I'll wire it up, hardwire it to the console at some point, but we'll just turn it on. But it's pumped up. It's not absolutely like, oh, hello, hello, I'm here. And if we go over here, let's have a listen. There's a slight. Tiny, tiny sound, but when we push this. Oi! So, yeah, um, I'm still waiting for the 3D prints for the flanges. I'm going to put flanges like this on these. There we go. Oh, yeah. Wow, it is a reasonable bit of a difference. And this video is basically shoving the problem under a rug, of course. Basically shoving the problem in the cupboard, yeah? And it doesn't actually sound that bad. I've already, when I was moving that, I sorted a load of the uh, leaks out and it sounds incredibly less noisy, but it's even less noisy now. So it's running now. And these, uh, the principal pipes, which are around the outside, are actually plugged in. You can now hear the rest of the leaks. Uh, there's uh, one somewhere around here. Apart from that, it's pretty airtight. This, as you heard, doesn't make a noise, and it means we can hear the pipes more.
So you just heard two ranks playing on their own, not merged together or anything like that. That was the principles around the back. In that take, there was a slight air leak. I've managed to patch that up. It's, it's amazing how quiet it is now. Uh, the, at the end, you heard the wooden flutes. Obviously, both of them need a little bit of tuning now. They've been moved around all over the place. And yeah, it's just gonna need a little bit of a looking. And I've got this, uh, my plan is the last video after getting the switches put in uh, is to just basically go through everything, saw it all out, tune what needs to be tuned again, do all of this, that and the other, and then try and get it played by somebody who knows what they're doing because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm still waiting for the 3D printer to finish, to finish printing the flanges that connect off, and then we're gonna see how it goes. I don't know how long this organ is gonna be sat specifically in this room. That's why I haven't set up a permanent set of pipes yet, and I think this might do sufficely for now, but we're just gonna see. It's a slight halfway measure, but it might also just stay like that. It looks like we're not gonna get onto the console and the console switches in this video after all. I wasn't expecting the blower move to be uh, quite the job it was. Anyway, I'll see you in a couple of seconds. However, for me, it'll be a few hours because the 3D printer is obviously 3D printer in. I'll tell you what, it definitely feels more like a musical instrument like right now instead of a completely unwieldy beast. And that's because the unwieldy beast is hidden in the cupboard. I still need to either A, track down a new discus blower or rebuild that one because it's always made some funny noises, even after the designated oiling every six months. Anyway, let's finish off the flanges and see what we can do. 